guys. I've missed you. I've missed you. Um, so today is a busy day in the beehive. And I know a lot of you are waiting for certain projects to show up, but I wish I could fulfill those wishes. But the way my brain works is it is all over the board. And today is I feel like one of those bees in my front yard because my front walkway is lined with lavender and the bees are just crazy. And you know, bees don't systematically go, okay, I went to this flower and now I'm going to the flower right next to it and then I'm going to move to the one next to it. No, they're just like me. They go to this flower. Oh, that flower looks better and they go over to that flower and then they go over to that flower and so that's the way the day is going today and so I'm just gonna be uh, chit-chatting away and uh, showing you a few things and then doing the drawing for the fabulous splendid sampler 2 with the jelly roll that uh, Stephanie donated to one of you awesome people. Thank you, thank you, Stephanie, for your generosity. So we'll do that at the end also. Um, so my goal today, my goal today is to make binding for two quilts. Uh, if you remember, the Christmas quilt and the Halloween quilt. I had fabric for both of those for binding. So I'm going to be making binding for the both of those and maybe if I have time I'll attach the binding to the quilt so it's all ready to be tacked down. And then it'll go on the tack down pile which is already three quilts tall. So I'll have five quilts that need to be tacked down. <laughs> yeah. I think those are winter projects. I think those are winter projects. Tacking binding is a winter project. But who knows, it's supposed to be, as you can see, my lovely hair. Yeah, it's a different weird do every day. Um, I haven't been to the hairdresser in months, months and months. And it's like, I don't even know what to do with it anymore. So I found these headbands. And I'm just pulling it back today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> we are all hair challenged. Well, those of us who haven't been to a hairdresser in e eons. Um, yeah, I don't even know what I want to do. If I ever get to go to a hairdresser again, I'm not even sure what I want to do. I, I have an inclination to shave my head and start over. <laughs> Except for I know that I have weird bumps. I found this weird bump on my skull here and I asked, gee, is that where I hit the sidewalk when I fell down the last time? Did I give myself a permanent bump? Yeah, who knows. So I'm looking forward to that day when I can go to a hairdresser, but um, I don't know when that is. Our numbers are climbing. We're in the middle of summer. It's going to be 90 degrees plus today, which is beautiful. The flowers are just reveling in all of the warmth. And what that means is that everybody who is sheltered in place is, they just want to get out. They just want to get out. And so our numbers are going up because People are having a hard time denying themselves, you know. I get it, but, oh, it's so not going to help us. It's so not going to help us. Got to wear your mask. Got to limit your exposure to big groups. But yesterday, was it yesterday? I had the most awesome day. And uh, one of my friends, uh, she was able to plug her sewing machine. Um, you can actually see pictures of that on my Wooly Mammoth blog. Um, she was actually able to plug her sewing machine into my back porch and sew out there. But she turned me on to something that I knew nothing about. Uh, 
but she has in the know young adult children. And so this project that she was working on is called um, it is called the Unpaper Towel Reuse Reusable Towels. So you need to Google that. The Unpaper Towel Reusable Towels. So, you know, help the environment to not have to go to the store to buy more paper towels. What you do is you um, save the paper towel holder. You have at least two paper towel holders. Now some of you are going to go, oh, too much work, I'm not doing that. But some of us kind of different souls kind of embrace things like that. So you buy flannel and she cut them into 10 and a half by 13 and a half pieces like this. She gave me this one. Isn't that cute? It says, rice to meet you. And then this one here for G. <laughs> now these are actual what would replace a paper towel. And then look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So what you do is you um, get a, a bunch of these. You make them like this and you layer them. And then you roll them. You save your paper towel tube and you roll them onto the paper towel tube and put them in your holder. And then as you use them, you throw them in the wash and you reuse them. So they're reusable, you know reusable. And I know it seems like a lot of work, but sometimes, you know, I don't use paper napkins. I um, took a whole bunch of quilting fabric and made uh, cloth napkins, and I keep them in a basket on my dining table, near my dining table. And so uh, using cloth napkins is nice. It's good for the environment, and it uses some scrap fabric, and it's decorative all piled in the basket. <laughs> So now, so today, I am going to, um, I have some old flannel that I just haven't done anything with, so I'm going to cut off chunks for her, and then I'm going to make me some of these. Yeah. Unpaper towels. So check it out. Check it out. I, I made a mistake. I accidentally posted a Stitch Roadie video to Quilt Roadies. It is a little bit of a challenge for me to keep the two things apart. If I had been smart, I would have just dumped the Stitch Roadies at the beginning onto the Quilt Roadies, but I kind of wanted to separate my brain, but I accidentally posted a Stitch Roadie video to the Quilt Roadie site. And once you do that, it's too hard to try to delete it off of there. So I just left it. Um, yeah. I've been cross-stitching a lot, but I've been stitching, uh, wool stitching too. I'm still working on that buttermilk basin project. I have high hopes for that. But today, I want to do the binding, and I want to start thinking about... Uh, project bags. I want to make project bags. And um, I bought zippers. I bought some fabric. Well, I pulled some fabric too. And um, so I bought a bunch of zippers and I have some other ones too, but I thought I needed some other colors. So I got some other colors. And if you remember my last shopping trip to the Stitch and Post, I got this this fun fabric by Tula Pink and look at their scissors and th spools of threads. I just thought that would make a great um, project bag. And then um, you know I got complimentary fabric because you want you kind of want to have two fabrics in uh, two different colors. And then there was this one that's all scissors and rotary cutters. And then there's this fabric that I bought to go with it. Now these fabrics were um, project bag uh, fabrics that 
for those of you that have been around, remember back in Arizona when I was making project bags in January or February um, on my little Janome gem, which was not such a great experience. Well, I brought that fabric home and some fabric that I bought at the quilt market in Tucson. Look at the little mermaids and then the little fishes. <laughs> and then there's this sushi fabric. I actually think the way this, oh, this is exciting. The way this sushi fabric is more like a heavier linen um, fabric. I think this might make an awesome rice bag. So I'll save that. I have no idea why I bought this one, but that was in Arizona. It must have had a purpose. Does fabric need a purpose? Maybe. And then there was this fabric. If you remember, I'm making a project bag out of that. And this was with this fabric and there's this fabric all that goes with it. Then I got this fabric. I don't think I bought this to go with it though. I must have some other fabric. But this was all in the pile of project bag, project bag fabrics. Isn't that pretty? So that's one of the things that this busy bee wants to do today. It seems like a big bite. I have my two binding fabrics ready to be cut. And then when I came back over the mountain, from Portland, um, I had received an email. I think I already told you this. Hmm. This is what my friend does when she repeats herself. Hmm. Well, anyway, I received a blast email from the Stitch and Post on some new fabric that they had in, and it was kind of a panel type of fabric, but I could tell by the picture I had to have it. I had to have it for a project bag. And it turns out that it is um, it is a panel, but I decided I just knew it was going to go fast. And so before I even went home, I drove directly from Portland to the stitching post, which is about three blocks from my house and uh, went in and said, Fern, where's the love fabric? And she said, oh, that, those are panels. And I said, that's okay. And she says, well, there's only two left. I'm so glad that I stopped because if I had waited another day, there would not have been any. And so the panel is, um, so here's, that's going to be the back of my, back of my um, project bag. Isn't that cute? All you need is love. And the rest of the panel is like this. Plus it has this little border, border thing of hearts. I know. This is going to be an awesome project bag. So I, um, I did. I bought the last two, last two panels. I don't know. Here's the thing, though. You know whether you can get these things again, whether shops can get them again, because my uh, my girlfriend Cakers, she said she went into the stitching post and looked for flannel. And uh, they didn't have any because they didn't get their shipment. Um, most fabric is, uh, you know, processed overseas. And that whole supply chain is a little bit slow. 
So, um, yeah, so when you see a fabric, you just need to get it. And although I used to think my very first quilt teacher owned a shop, so I used to think she told me that because she just wants to make money. But her, her rule of thumb, she said, in my very first class, was if you like a fabric, buy a yard. If you love a fabric, buy three yards. And I think right now there's more than myself that's starting to follow that rule. <laughs> Because they're, the, you know, fabric is somewhat, pieces are somewhat hard to come by. And, um, yeah, so there's the, there's the crux of our world right now. I, um, I showed you this. This is Kelly Ray, my neighbor. She's an, uh, an artist. And I found a frame for it. And so I framed it. It's, it's absolutely sweet and having grown up in a sailing family it just totally speaks to me everything about this speaks to me so I need to find a place here in the beehive to hang this so that's a job for today but other than that we're going to do some binding making and I'll just talk while we're well, I'm cutting, so let me let me kind of get this going here. I'm drinking a kombucha. I swallow loud, don't I? <laughs> it's 90 degrees outside. It's literally 90 degrees. And that's the thing is that G and I, we know that this winter is going to be somewhat... Um, restrictive you know we're not going to be over it by fall and winter so we bought uh, an extra cycle we've had one before and uh, but we thought this winter we might need one because although I was a diehard downhill skier I no longer do that anymore um, heck I fall in sensible shoes so I have hung up my skis. I never could get the hang of cross-country skiing. I just never could. I was too ingrained in downhill. And uh, we have snowshoes, so we can use that. But we thought, well, depending on the weather, it'd be nice to be able to exercise. And neither of us wanting to go to a gym, uh, we decided to buy an extra cycle. And supposedly, they're delivering it today. Of course, you never know about deliveries these days, do you? Yeah. So I am going to see if I can just bring you over here. Don't you just love my, <laughs> love my hair? <laughs> There's some gray showing there. <laughs> There's some gray. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> It's pretty bad. Hairdos nowadays are, are pretty bad. I was talking to a girlfriend yesterday, and she, she had a little bob and had a clip in her hair. And I said, that reminded me of my third grade hairdo. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, so let's see what we're doing. Let's see here. So I know there's all kinds of ways to do binding. But I am a person who likes binding on the bias, you know. I like bias binding. And I know there's all kinds of ways to, um, you can machine sew it down if you want. But, you know, I think I, I have come to realize, although I have more than enough handwork I don't need more. I still like the way, um, I still love the way that uh, 
hand stitch binding looks. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do this in half pieces and just see how, you know, I never know how much to buy, so I just buy a yard and, and go for it. Now this binding, if you remember, this blue is for this bright mermaid quilt. Isn't that pretty? That bright color? Yeah. I'm going to just cut, cut my salvage off. And I always cut an extra inch on my salvage because for whatever peculiar reason I have the need to save salvages because someday I'm going to do something spectacular out of salvages. I'm going to do them on a 45 degree angle. So how are you guys doing? I have to admit, I bought a table runner kit <laughs> from the Fat Quarter Shop. And the reason I bought it is I was feeling down um, and I decided after seeing um, some of the projects that my girlfriend was working on that I just it, and everything I, I mean, not everything but a majority of things that I do are handwork and I tell you, sometimes it feels like you're never going to get anything done. It really does. I mean, I, um, you know, I embroider, I cross stitch, I sew spargo stitch, I, um, I make hexes, I applique. <laughs> I really just kind of do it all, you know. And so after seeing her quilts that she she does, and then having done the quilt show, uh, quilt, you know, where I shared my quilt, my old quilts all those piece quilts, um, I thought, oh my gosh, there's something so satisfying on just piecing a quilt and getting a top done. And, and I haven't done that for so long, you know, that I um, decided that I needed a project that wasn't big, but would satisfy that itch. And I think a half yard may not be enough binding. It's kind of funny, after a while you kind of get to know um, how much binding will cover a quilt. But back to uh, the kit I ordered. I wanted something totally different. You know, I, I tend towards... Uh, Personally, I tend towards a lot of the prim um, style quilts, you know, and um, this was something that was, it was a table runner. It was bright. I'm kind of thinking, and I don't know for sure till it comes. I'm kind of thinking it was a Lori Holt style, 
and it was um, coffee cups, not mugs, but cups. And um, I do not think this is going to be enough. So I'm going to cut the rest of it. Uh, so, and it's a table runner, and I just thought, oh, it would make a great gift. And it would make me happy. Because it would be something totally different. You know what I do is if I end up with, if the binding ends up too long, uh, I save those bindings up in a cabinet over there. And then sometimes if I have a scrap quilt or a table runner or a table topper that it'll fit, I use those then, then like on baby quilts. <coughs> is up today and he's out there cutting the grass <laughs> still having so much fun watching um, Midsummer Murders. Holy moly. I know you're not supposed to do that backwards. In fact, I have a friend, Sandy, who did that and accidentally sliced her hand. So every time I do that, I think about that. <laughs> but it's just going to be just a little ways backwards. you back here a bit. There you are. <laughs> Let's see what's going on, huh? Okay, what color thread do I have in here? Have to every time I change my thread, I have to empty off all my little toys. But they smile. One of the twisted sisters made this little pin cushion. Is it not the most adorable? I gave him some antenna. My whale has antenna. Let's see. I think we need. I think we need different thread color.
Oh, and I forgot to show you some more fabric that I bought for project bags. So here's the complementary pieces. But wait till you see the focus piece. <gasps> Is that not hysterical? Yeah. Oh. The project bag pattern that I use is um, on the Moda Bag Shop. That's the one I use. And if I want it to be a little bit bigger than that one, I, um, I just add, you know, some inches to it. Glasses, glasses. Let's see, I guess we, do we have blue? Oh yeah, we have blue. I shall use a blue bobbin. So I suddenly have gotten back on, thanks to my younger son, back on the reading. You know, I don't know why, but since this, and I'm a prolific reader. I am. Not bragging. Actual fact. I come by it genetically. Um, reading was big in our household. And, um, and my younger son definitely got that genetic component. And so he suggested this book by Victor Laval. Um, called The Changeling, and it was exactly the right book to get me back out of the doldrums of no reading. And that, it was actually, it was actually for me to not be reading and not have any interest in reading was quite disturbing to me. Um, you know, because I, I get so much joy out of reading that um, I gotta arrange my little people up here uh, that to have no interest uh, and isn't that what the pandemic kind of has done it's altered our lives in ways that are very uncomfortable and for me one of those ways was that suddenly I wasn't interested in reading and so this book the Changeling by Victor Laval was spot on for me. And so since that reading, I uh, last week finished The Queen Bee, or Queen Bee. I'm not sure I could recommend that back book. In fact, I, I'm, it, it was too, it's kind of funny because the, the Changeling is totally, unrealistic but the queen bee I wasn't sure there was really characters like that I couldn't identify with that's what it was I couldn't identify with any character in the queen bee yeah but I finished it I read it and I finished it it's a light-hearted good beach read I guess you oops I didn't adjust my seam allowance let's see Um, and then this week I finished the um, Silent Patient. Yeah, that was some kind of book too because it was, uh, I mean, they put it under the category of psychological thriller, but the author himself says, I, I never thought of it as a psychological thriller. And listening to the author's um, talk about the book, and it's on the New York Times bestseller list. I chain piece my binding too. <laughs> just, just so you know. <laughs> um, so uh, it's called The Silent Patient, and I, oh, I really enjoyed that read. And so now, oh, 
So I've got three fiction books under my belt in the last couple weeks. Makes me feel so good. <laughs> Back in the saddle! And so uh, now um, the next book, uh, the current book that I am uh, reading is called, um, it's a nonfiction, and it's called White Fragility. Why it's so hard for white people to talk about racism. I figure this is a, it's a New York Times bestseller, and um, I'm always for learning. Learning and evolving. And so I thought I would read that one. And then I have a whole list now, a whole list of uh, books that are on my, on my, On my list to read, and I am back in the saddle. That feels so awesome. I didn't give myself much room there, huh? So, if you are, if you enjoy reading, Tell me what you're reading. Do you find, um, are you finding more, uh, if you're a reader, are you finding more comfort in the uh, nonfiction or the fiction genre? And what are you reading? And uh, put it in the comments because I'm going to need a whole list. I just know that it's, oh shoot, I let it. I wasn't paying attention and it got folded over. Okay, there we go. I'll clip this. Because um, I'll add more books to my reading list. I was so sad. I'm part of the press. Uh, I'm part of the quilt press. And uh, so I get uh, four, four warning notices uh, that are sent out by the big shows and stuff because um, I'm invited to, uh, to go into those shows. Um, and having Quilt Market, um, International Quilt Festival and all that cancel this last week. It's just... I tell ya, we can't take any more. Captain! The ship can't take any more! Yeah, that's the way I feel. And, um... But I did get good news this week. And that was one of my favorite little quilt groups, the Twisted Sisters. Um, you have to go back to last year's quilt show uh, video and you'll see the Twisted Sisters in it. They were the one of the featured quilt groups in the show. It, you know, that friendship has been so amazing. Uh, and it was, it was very much by accident because uh, the four of them are from the Washington area, up like by Gig Harbor area. And um, they have for over 20 years come down. Yeah, it's so heartbreaking. This is the first year they haven't been able to come down um, to the quilt show. They used to come with their mom. And and then they after their mom passed away, they continued on the trek every year, and they come for a week. And they, the year I met them, they were renting. Uh, the uh, there was a house across the creek from me, that was a VRBO back then, and they rented it, and um, they literally. It's not an exaggeration. Uh, I'm not exaggerating at all. They easily could make 20 plus quilt tops 
in that one week. They are like a sweatshop. It's unbelievable. Um, and the, the projects, oh my gosh. And so, um, I was looking out the window, and in the evening, they were um, coming out on the back patio and having their dinner, and I'd see quilt tops and stuff, and I told G, I said, those are quilters. i got to go check them out. And so I did, and it has been such an amazing friendship because they're so inspiring not only as a family they are one of those inspiring families but um, as quilters they just are unbelievable just unbelievable and so um, this one's not gonna work it will work later I gotta get the right angle and so the good news I got was, although they couldn't come this year, they did get together up on the Hood Canal, and they sewed for a week. And oh, the photographs. Um, I will, on Thursday, I'll ask if I can show those photographs. Um, and maybe, I'm sure that they'll say yes. And I'll show you just some, just a fraction of what they did a fraction of what they did and uh but pff, here i'm i'm rambling i am rambling um the good news was that they already have a reservation for a place here in the neighborhood for next year's quilt show I am hoping that that vaccine that um, the British have in the works will be significant enough that next summer will be a different kind of summer than this summer. I know that this winter won't be different, but conceivably by next summer. You know, one of the things that I love, uh, one of the embroidery things that I love doing is um, Crabapple Hill. And I also get them on email. But I've been... So far, I have been good about not, I mean, I, I fell, fell under the spell of the coffee cups, and so far have avoided the Crabapple Hill. Um, you know, I tried, I tried so many times. My girlfriend and I, my girlfriend Lori and I have tried so many times to get back into that. We were able to, by sheer luck, get into a Crab Apple Hill workshop and have never been able to get into another one. And I so wanted to go to the, uh, the Halloween one. I mean, Meg Hockey does a fabulous job with her workshops. But... In the email that came this week, there was the cutest. And if you don't know what Crab Apple Hill embroidery is, it's embroidery where she has used either color crayons or um, colored pencils to shadow the embroidery stitches. And it's just awesome. It is just awesome. I'm wondering. Where is that pillow? Let me see here. Do I have one here? Nope. Huh. I had a really pretty pillow that I had made. Um,
makes you wonder. <laughs> I am so organized, I can't tell you how organized I am. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> it's very, very sweet. It's, uh, I wonder what happened to that pillow. <laughs> I really like that pillow. But you use color crayolas or color pencils to shadow your embroidery stitches. And the one that came out in the email blast was Toadstools. Oh. I'm trying not to get it. I'm trying not to get it. And she's a real fan of um, Cosmo embroidery thread. That's the embroidery thread she uses, Cosmo. Well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking this is going to be kind of boring for you. I'm just rambling along. I am, I am, I've still got quite a bit of the binding strips because that. That quilt is big. I mean, look at all this binding strip. I've got to iron it, and um, where is the end of that? Oh, there it is. That maybe we should just call it a day. Let's go ahead and do the um, uh, giveaway. And call it a beehive busy bee beehive day and just so you know I will be knee deep in binding knee deep in binding okay one more strip and then I will get the computer out and we will do the random comment paper. okay so let's see here I'm dying to know who's going to win this. Okay. I gotta get logged on to my hotspot because it's kind of interesting. I'm in my house. The beehive is in my house, but um, the Wi Fi doesn't reach the beehive. So if I want to get onto Wi Fi in the beehive, I have to use my hotspot. There it is. Okay. YouTube random comment picker. Okay. So I got that. And I'm going to open that. Can you feel the suspense? Feel the suspense. Go to quilt roadies. And I, I can't thank you enough. I try, I read every comment. I um, acknowledge every comment. Uh, be, but the sheer volume keeps me from talking with every comment or commenting back, the sheer volume of the comments. But know that I do appreciate it. And we are, the Quilt Roadies group is almost heading to 20,000 of us. That is amazing to me. It's amazing that we have so many people that um, are connected in kindness and quilting and supporting each other. And I can't thank you enough for that. I can't thank you enough. So let's see. It was on this video that we... Buying a used... Yep. And... Over a thousand comments, so you know why. Okay, so plus I combined, um, I add on to the end the the comments that are put on the woolly mammoth site. I prefer people to just do it in one spot, but it's hard to get everybody on that bandwagon. So now.
to the comment picker. Okay. Um, and I need to get this URL. There's a process to this. Put the URL in there. Based on specific tests, text, specific text. And so know that I am putting jelly with a Y and jelly with an IE because people spent, spent, spelt it two different ways. <laughs> Here we go. It's pulling all the comments that have jelly with a Y or jelly with an IE. And then I have the extra entries. Okay, then we hit start. See who the winner is. <laughs> well, the winner of the jelly roll, which is so cute, Moda Jelly Roll, and the Pat Sloan and Jane Davidson, the Splendid Sampler 2 book with another hundred blocks goes to Patter B. And her comment was, or his comment, not sure, Anna, sure enjoy visiting with you. You are so encouraging. Thanks. I like raspberry jelly donuts. Mmm, so do I. Peanut butter and jelly. Thanks, Stephanie, for being so generous. Have a great day. So, Patter B, you're the winner. Be sure to leave me a comment on uh, Instagram messaging or at the email, the Gmail um, address that's in the description box of this, uh, of my YouTube channel, uh, of your mailing address, and I will send it out to you. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Patter B. Everyone else, wish I had a thousand jelly rolls. I would send you each a jelly roll if I had a thousand jelly rolls. But thank you for hanging out with me. Um, I'm not going to keep boring you with my binding making because that is what I'm determined to do today is to put binding on two more quilts. And then maybe next time we'll be able to do something more constructive. If I get my binding done today, I'm going to start cutting out project bags. And um, that's using the Moda Bake Shop pattern for project bags, if you're interested. Thank you. See you guys later. You take care. Thanks for watching. And be sure to like and subscribe on Quilt Roadies.